Mike Ryan is going to come in any minute now on the zip line from Bristol because the last three days I have been very uncomfortable for him. I can't wait to ask him some questions about what's been going on. There's a, there's also someone waiting to tell us they have proof that the earth is flat if you want to take calls today. Okay. Go ahead and call that call. Uh, go ahead and pull that call up and just let that I person. Mean, you call the guy. He just calls it. Yeah, right. All right. What What is it, flat earth person? What do you got for us? What's the proof? Well, there's a lot of proof out there. I just want to get a, give a few of you guys out there in the world to take a look, whether it's on YouTube or anything it is of people doing experiments. First one, people can look across Lake Michigan with a telescope at a 60-mile portion and see the skyline of Chicago, which, according to the curvature of the Earth, is not possible. They tell us it's a mirage. Any questions there? No, sir. Go on. Uh, let's see here. We have proved by NASA scientists and people, you know, uh, around the globe that we cannot pass through the Van Allen radiation belts. We've admitted from NASA that the moon technology was lost, and that is why we haven't returned to the moon. That is actually admitted. You can research this. Everything NASA puts out as a photograph, as a picture, is admitted to be CGI, altered in some way. Uh, you can also, I mean, uh, arguments I want to touch base with people think, okay, well, if you travel in a straight direction, why is it you can end up on the same uh, point if you go straight? Well, with respect to a North Pole, which there is something obviously pulling magnetic north, whether it's a, uh, a vortex in the center of our land maps, whatever it is, there surely is something in a, in a large span, a large distance, you could keep respect to north and appear to be traveling straight. So that is one argument I do, uh, you know, hear from other people. Um, there is a experiment called the Bedford Level Experiment in England. Uh, they shoot a laser across the canal, you know, trying to find actual curvature of, you know, the earth that the water should curve, not be straight. Um, by the way, every five miles you look, there should be 16.67 feet of curve down. That is according to all calculations you can look up anywhere you want, according to scientists. Uh, there are salt flats. I forget where they are in the world, but if it rains even an inch, there is miles and miles and miles of perfectly flat water that reflects a perfect image of what you're looking at, wow. which a curved body of water would not show. Um, there's even more things about gyroscopes on planes. You know, I think we've all played with gyroscopes. If you hadn't, it's a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, they stay fixed on an airplane, and they are actually told by engineers that they do stay fixed to the airplane. Now, they're said to be using them to keep them level. If they are fixed, then they wouldn't be doing their job. You could twist your hand around if a gyroscope is put, uh, spinning, hold it any way you want. That gyroscope will stay there, and that's how they use that to keep level, as we call it. Um, I did take, you know, the best notes I could while I was waiting for you guys. I wasn't prepared for you to take me, but I do appreciate it. Uh, silly things. At the equator, we're spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, as opposed Whoa. to if you were standing at the North Pole, there's really no spin going on. Uh, when you're watching rockets and shuttles take off, they'll tell you that they're not going completely straight up forever. You guys are in Florida. It's great. You've probably seen the shuttles and rockets take off. Don't they always end up curving to, like parallel to the Earth? They'll tell you that that's because the Earth is spinning. Yet yeah, a spinning Earth has no effect on a plane. You might think flying to California might be faster than flying from California to Florida because the Earth is spinning, but no. Yet the rockets... Uh, smoke or exhaust that's coming off, you'll see it all of a sudden, it starts going level. They don't go straight up. Matter of fact, as you get into space, they've proven in a vacuum, a rocket thrust does not work in space. There is no thrust. Nothing should be traveling. Hmm. I could go on. I've done a lot of research. It sounds crazy, but it's such a good, fun topic. Even if it's entertaining to people, there really is reason to look across the plane of Earth you live on. Don Lebatard. Mr. Gods, do you have a theory? Two gods. Uh, yeah, let's uh, hear Bomani's theory. That would be my theory. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the two gods on ESPN Radio. College basketball, as you know it, may be dying or dead. We might get to that at some point, but first, that caller. <laughs> a caller to the last segment of 
the local hour that we do before we start here nationally, was yammering for a long time about his proof that the earth is flat. And that guy talked for about four minutes without a word from any of us. And then this person writes in, why would you give a moron like this the platform to spread this misinformation? You don't get the show. I believe that that guy rivaled. He does He does not win, but he rivaled one of the best calls we've ever gotten. Who is our best caller ever? Who, who would the audience say? Now, we don't take very many calls. We've never taken very many calls. But every once in a while, a loon sneaks through, and we celebrate that looniness. Fake Jason Jackson. Fake Jason Jackson yeah. is a great caller, but I'm talking about the traditional sports radio caller. I'm not talking about a guy doing an impersonation. We got a fake Pavarotti that calls in. I'm not talking about the actual talented people who call in and do talented things. I'm talking about the crazies and the loons, the people from the fringes who think that their way of communicating with the world is through AM radio. So they call a sports radio show and then give you their theories for some reason. No idea why he called this number. No idea why we picked up the call for four minutes. He was explaining to us why the earth is flat. He also said he wasn't expecting to be taken, so he was still taking notes, which he, is weird. Why yeah. would you call yeah, it radio? And, and so what, I, if I could have, I'd still be having that conversation for the remainder of this show as performance art andy kaufman i would have loved to have just taken that call for the three hours of this show he made some good points <laughs> open my eyes I so mean. but uh, guillermo isn't lombardo famously in the history of our show isn't that guy lombardo find one of his calls it would he not be considered it, it's either look at the very beginning at the very beginning, I don't know if you guys remember this. Maybe you could find this. This might have been the first caller we ever got. See if you can find Benny from Fort Lauderdale. Oh, yeah. This might be 15 years ago when we started. <laughs> and, God, you guys are going to find this funny. If we can find that call from 15 years ago, if we can find that call, you, you will have understood, the people who have been with us throughout, how we have morphed from one thing into something else over those 15 years. Because the original sports radio caller that I made fun of was a guy named Benny from Fort Lauderdale. Yep. Remember him well. And he called in one time and he just said that the best team ever was the Dolphins 17-0 and season because they never lost a game. <laughs> and that was the call. <laughs> That was it. He yes. was just calling to nominate what he thought was the best team ever. It's not what we were talking about. He just wanted to nominate that. Yep. And, and he did. And for a long time, he was the best caller in the show's history because he had said only the world's most obvious thing. Now, Stugat stole that idea and turned it into something else to great profit and success. <laughs> <laughs> stole that character, made it much better, made it his own. Next thing you know, he's yelling at Wilbon and Rich Eisen over the course of the week. <laughs> or they're yelling at me. But give people a taste, Billy, of Lombardo. Give them – Lombardo was a guy who only called a couple of times, but he was going to bury us with his sports knowledge. Al, you're on 790. Yeah, hi, Lombardo. Dan, I can't believe how accurate you are on this obvious point while well, how – slow on the uptake, the other guy is. It is so obvious. I mean, you take a look at golf. Someone who has the yips. Sam Snead, my God, in the late 50s, he had to go to side saddle. Then they had to change the rule. You couldn't go croquet. He still went side saddle the opposite way. Both feet to the left <laughs> of the ball. You see guys like Bernhard Langer that have had the yips and went to the long putter three different times. You've got guys like Ian Baker Fitch, who was one of the greatest putters in the world, won the British Open, got the yips, went to the long putter, couldn't even putt again, quit the game, became an analyst. You go to bowling. Are you trying to tell me that if Mark Roth is starting to miss a lot of 10 pins in the channel or hooking it too much, that he isn't going to go smart enough, which he eventually did, to a lighter ball? A 14-pound ball, sometimes that look like a little child speckled ball at your local bowling alley so we can move cross alley and throw it up to make 10 pins at the 95% rate you're supposed to on the PBA Tour. If you can use an open stroke like Joan Rivers on bad acid, if you get the job done, get the job done. It's all about whatever works works. It's just like life. If you want to go through life trying to fornicate with the most beautiful woman in the world that you can while also have a main squeeze and a four or five mistresses on the side, rock on, and then try to keep 
trading up. But then once you're lucky enough to find that foxy angel of your life, if you're not smart enough to grab onto her and hold on to her for 14 years while you enjoy your summer home in Lake Garda for six weeks every year, then you're a dummy. But what works, works to gots, you lame uptake. Okay, so... Uh, that, Just great. That was Lombardo. Uh, Stugatz was talking about Shaq should throw, uh, shoot free throws underhanded. And, uh, or shouldn't, I guess. And Lombardo said t- shouldn't, yes. t- took objection. Uh, Chris Cody is going deep in the archives to see if we can find our original caller, Benny from Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> where the point, the, the very point where we decided, you know what we're going to do? We're going to mock sports radio the rest of the way. <laughs> after this call, that's the tipping point on the direction we chose after that. But let's hear another call from Lombardo. Let's hear another from this loon. Al, you're on 790. Yeah, so sick and tired of listening to heat management players, fans, and alleged radio sports talk show hosts in South Florida say that they were two wins away from winning the title. They choked away a 14-point lead with just four minutes left at home in Game 2 after winning the opener at home. As they missed 11 of their last 12 shots offensively, while defensively they allowed Dallas to hit 11 of their last 12 shots. In NBA Finals history, when the team with home court advantage wins the first two games at home, that team wins the championship 95% of the time. 95%. Just a minute 5% chance of losing the series. That's where the Heat lost the finals in the last four minutes of game two at home, blowing that 14 point lead. And that choke job cost me $100,000 because of the day after the little weasel himself, Commissioner David Stern, expanded the league salary cap. I bet $5,000 in Las Vegas on the Heat at odds of 20 to 1 to win it all. Because that allowed the Heat enough cap space room to sign both LeBron James and Chris Bosh. And as usual, I was right on the button. I just didn't get the 100K. But I will say this to you. Getting close to Christmas Day, Dan. You effeminate (laughs) tribal collectivist. I'll put up a million dollars. You put up a hundred thousand. That's ten to one of the money in case you can count. And we'll ask questions about sports of every sport imaginable. And I'll bury you for dinner. You know it, I know it. That's, I put that challenge up for 28 years down here in South Florida. And not one person has accepted the challenge yet. A million to a hundred thousand, you bum. Now come on, take me up on it. Every sport imaginable. Let's go. Don't you still believe that Cuban Americans have the right that after the 2000 presidential election, that 22 percent of people who voted said that they changed their vote to Bush because they felt that only on did not deserve to be with his natural-born father. Didn't you even agree with that, you twisted sister? But you won't take me up on that million-dollar to $100,000 bet, will you? You'll make little jokes and you'll put little put-ins here and a little take-in here. Because that's what you show sure is. It's garbage. When I was with NBC flagship station, my Arbitron rating was 28. <laughs> you hit bums are lucky if you get a six. Good day. <laughs> Gosh, that was great. Nailed the dismount. Good day. I uh, he had a twenty eight chair. Uh, yeah, put it on the poll, please, Allison. Uh, did you know that uh, Lombardo was the known South Florida sports trivia champion? Did he take a breath during all of that? It, it's amazing. It's amazing. But I also want to put to put this on the poll. Al Lombardo versus Benny from Fort Lauderdale. Who is the better call? Incidentally, I later met Al Lombardo in real life. This isn't going to surprise you. Breath of coffee and cigarettes. <laughs> Not, right? If I asked you, what does that person smell like? They're, if I made you guess, <laughs> coffee That's... coffee and cigarettes. Yes. Uh, 6 a.m. coffee and cigarettes. Yes, and not clean shaven, I'm guessing, right? Uh, yeah, no, I think he was. He really? was clean shaven, but the stubble, the stubble started growing four minutes after he shaved. <laughs> so here is Benny from Fort Lauderdale. And so these are two very different kinds of sports radio calls. Which one is the greatest call in show history? Is it Al Lombardo or is it? This, one of the first calls we ever got. Benny in Fort Lauderdale. You're on 790. Hi, this is uh, Benny from Fort Lauderdale. We've established that. (laughs) Uh, I want to say that the 72 Dolphins uh, are so special because they won every game and then they won all the playoff games. That's a pretty good call. Who is this? (laughs) 
So which is the better uh, call? They're two very different calls. 